and it require a uh, wide wide antenna. And beside to like uh, uh, reduce the polarization loss factor, uh, we uh, we need like uh, have a, a circular polarization antenna, and and like too easy to implement in our um, in our system. So like uh, structure of antenna require simple. So that's why we propose an, uh, an left hand, a uh, left hand and right hand, a circular, circularly polarized for 5G device. And next to I want to talk about the flow chart for our uh, antenna design. And here is, we, we, we have like basically have four step, four step for our design, antenna design. <coughs> Firstly, in the first step, we will design like antenna element. Here we we choose we chose a uh, dipole antenna, and because in Vietnam at the at at that at that time we designed this antenna, um, Viettel decided like um frequency for five G is three point seven seventy five gigahertz, so uh, we designed this antenna at this frequency, and. Uh, to like to to got the wide band and matching for element antenna, uh, uh, the uh, parameter LB and LAB which will equal uh, uh wavelength uh, per four. So here is the our um uh, reflection coefficient uh of my of our antenna element. Uh, is has the uh, six hundred ninety uh, megahertz for bandwidth under um, minus ten dB, and in the next step, based on the uh, sequential rotation technique, we uh, proposed and. Uh, Three or uh, three dimension dipole antenna array. For more detail, uh, in our feeding, we we use we uh, we use high hybrid hybrid uh, and transmission line technique to design uh, our feeding. Uh, here you can see the the e equivalent circuit. So. Um, the, the new thing we propose here is we can in this we, in our design we can change between the uh, between uh, left hand and right hand mode. To do that, we uh, we just change the uh, excited port excited port to to got the um, to, to got the um, left hand or right hand mode here when we started in RMA one we will we will got like um, a left hand and when we started at RMA two we will got like right hand <coughs> so uh, we can easily and here is the um, simulation result of our feeding. You can see um, in the in both uh, left hand and right hand mode, we also uh, for the amplitude, the um, at at the desired at the desi desired frequency, um, we we got the difference between the uh, between four, between four ports, 
four parts is that uh, e basically e equal is that like uh, and for and for the uh, phase in in the right hand mode it has like um the the different because we to to have a um, circular circular polarization uh, we require the difference between like uh, like like uh, like two parts is uh, um, maybe night my ninety degree so here you can see like is um, basically uh, meet the requirement uh, however in left left hand mode um, the uh, the 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 different um, the the maximum degrees is a little bit higher than right hand mode. So um, in result, the in, in the right hand mode had a good result rather than left hand. Um, here that we compare, we compare between the simulation and measurement result. For re reflection coefficient, um, in left right hand mode, we had uh, we had bandwidth with uh, reflection coefficient um, lower lower than minus ten uh, dB is thirty seven point uh, point three percent, and is also had the same. Uh, at uh, left hand, however, for the CP bandwidth, you can see like um, in the right hand uh, is it better than left hand with um, 22% and for the left hand does 4%. Uh, is it because you can see in the um, above um, slide? Uh, because like in right hand is had a good um, feeling other than left hand, so um, so that's why uh, right hand mode is better than left hand. And for the begin in the for the begin in right hand mode, we have the um, uh, approximately uh, nine dBi at the uh, 3.75 and for the left hand is um, a little bit lower uh, 9 9.47 dBi and here the, uh, we compare our, our proposal with some related work you can see like proposed antenna is dominant about the gain and bandwidth and CP uh, than uh, other, other reference. So here is some conclusion for our proposal. Firstly, uh, we propose antenna with two uh, CP mode. Uh, in the left right hand mode, we have the bandwidth uh, from, from seven, from 3.2 to 4.6 4 gigahertz with with begin at uh, with begin at the uh, 3.75 gigahertz is uh, 9.9 uh, 50 and mm, in the left hand mode we have like uh, the same bandwidth, but like it had a um, that CP bandwidth is um, the um, thinner than our than in the right hand mode, and the total radiation efficiency is quite good at both mode. So here is my presentation. So thank you uh, so much for your attention. Thank you, the presenter, for his presentation. So now let's come to ask the author. Do you have any questions? Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, can you like uh, ask again question because I can hear it. Uh, isolation between uh, uh, okay uh, actually uh, we don't like inside the two pot at the same time so yeah so so when like we it's it started at the uh, RMA one, like RMA two. Uh, we said like uh, um, 40, uh, 50 ohm. So like uh, like don't have any like um, isolation isolated between like uh, two, two 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 modes. Uh, because we. Actually, we didn't try to like it started to to pause at the at the same time. So, yeah. I think his question is interesting. If you desire on kind of both mode, left hand and right hand, you know, so the isolation must be calculated and estimated before fabrication, and. Uh, I think you have already the results. So just try to remember because even the antenna, you don't assign two modes, two SMA, two parts at the same time, of course. But however, still have isolation between two parts, you know? Or maybe he don't really understand that's it. It's like of the isolation to hit a tenant. Yeah. So um, if I remember it's suddenly so the isolation is all the way left one at 30 degrees, 30 degrees. So if you put the product to the two top, don't uh, uh, cannot decide the same time. That explains why the isolation is that high. But for uh, the person, so do you have any other questions?
online uh, author do you have any question mr sơn phạm do you have any question Hi everyone, my name is Phạm Minh Sơn from National Defense Academy of Japan. Today, I will talk about examination of investigation method of malware spreading state. This is presentation contents today. Introduction As of 2011, it was estimated that there would be about 50 billion IoT devices in 2020. On the other hand, it is known that embedded network devices such as IoT devices have many vulnerabilities. In recent years, malware that used their vulnerabilities to infect IoT devices, build over a network, and perform those attacks has become widespread. For example, in September 2016, Alaska and destructive DDoS attack was carried out by the malware Mirai. The appearance of botnet that enabled Alaska attack attracted attention. In the United States in 2019, many medical and educational institutions suffered about $7.5 billion from the ransomware attack. Data from 2020 ransomware recently reports also show that 35% of organizations suffered between $1 million and $5 million. In order to prevent such attack, it is very important to analyze the behavior of malware and monitor the infection status. In particular, research on the infection activity of warm-time malware targeting IoT devices that spread destructively and actively, such as Mirai, is drawing attention. Darknet observation and honeypot installation are effective methods for grasping the attack activity of their malware. Related work the result of observing the activity of multiple malware that infect IoT devices have been reported in many reports. NICT reported the observation results of the number of packets that arrive in the darknet. This report indicates the days when infectious activity and observers based on the communication characteristic of ransomware such as WannaCry, Petia, and BadTrapBit. In addition, the date and the time when the infection activity of the IoT malware Mirai variant and Hajime was observed and the country statistics of the sender are reported. Also, NICT attracted observational data featuring the malware Mirai and Hajime and reported the increase or decrease in the number of short IP addresses on a daily basis. At a research, it was found that the number of Hajime infections was on the order of several times the number of Mirai infections. This report also clarified the scale of infection of Hajime and Mirai and the date when the infection activity was achieved. IIJ Security Report 2018 investigated the infection activity of Mirai and Keyboard and Hajime using packet that arrived at Honeypot and made sure change in the number of IP addresses of their sources. The report clarifies the tendency of malware infection activity and show the number of short IP addresses for each port. In addition, in IIJ Security 2019, it investigated the activity state of Mar of Mirai, Hajime, and Keywords based on the packets data received at a honey port. It measured the, the activity status and infection scale of Mirai variant and indicated the re relationship with the case where the DDoS attack using Mooboot in September 2019 caused the damage to service of Wikipedia, Twitch, and Blizzard. Purpose 
related to work focus on the source IP addresses of packets that have the communication characteristic of malware, and grasp the activity of malware infection activity by finding the unique number of source IP addresses for each day. However, with this method, it is not possible to distinguish between a source address that appears on multiple days and newly appearing source address, so it is not possible to determine the daily increase or decrease of infected addresses. For this reason, the actual spread of malware infection is unknown. Therefore, in this study, we propose a method to identify a newly infected source address and measure the increase or decrease of infection by finding a unique source address over the entire observation period. So investigate the infection expanding or shrinking a womb time malware. Proposal method. Before describing the proposal method, some definition are in order. Darknet. A darknet is an IPv4 address based adverse type in BGP and is a set of addresses to which devices are not connected. Darknet observation. Darknet observation refers to acquisition and accumulation of packets that arrive at an address to which a device is not connected. The number of source address unique IP. The number of source addresses is the total number of unique addresses obtained by adjusting malware characteristic from all packets observed during the day and excluding duplicate source addresses. The number of new source address, new IP. The number of new source addresses is the total number of newly appearing source addresses in these days. Before explaining the proposed method, the image of this research can be illustrated as shown in the figure. The corona infection situation is investigated over five days. As you can see on day zero, the number of infected persons is zero. From day one, infected persons are merged, and the number of infected persons and the number of newly infected persons are investigated. The results are also shown in the table below. If we draw a graph with the number of infected persons, we get the figure on the bottom left. This is the proposal method of related work. This figure shows the number of infected persons every day but does not show the expanding or shrinking of the infection. If we draw a graph with the number of newly infected persons in each day, we get the lower right figure. This is the result of the proposed method of this study. By looking at this figure, we can clearly understand the expanding or shrinking of the infection. If we replace people with short IP addresses, we get the image of this research by examining the number of newly infected source IP addresses. The expanding or shrinking of one time malware infection can be reviewed. This study analyzes data that allows us to observe unauthorized communication in the darknet. The analysis method is divided into five major steps. Step 1. Divide the whole of the D-Day's data observer from the darknet into one day's worth of data. Step 2. Extract the source IP addresses of the target packets with malware communication characteristic from the observer data for one day for create the source list LI from day I. Step 3. Use the source list LI created in step 2 to create a unique source list CI for day I. Step 4. Find the number of new appearing senders NI from the CI list for day D. Step 5. Calculate the number of IP addresses in the CI and NI list and draw a graph. In the resourcing graph, the blue line is daily number of source addresses based on the method of NICT and the red line is the number of new appearing source addresses based on the proposal method in this study. Experiment. The purpose of the experiment is to statistic the number of infected and newly infected one-time malware 
that are challenged rise in the implementation of the proposed method. This will allow us to investigate the expanding or shrinking of the infection. In addition, the subject experiment is IoT malware, Mirai and Hajime, which have become active in recent years. The dataset is Darknet Observation dataset provided by NICT. The observation period is from the 1st of January 2016 to December 31st, 2018. Warm-type malware such as Mirai and Hajime may have a unique characteristic in their scan packets. In this section, we determine that an incoming packet is a connection request from Mirai or Hajime based on the following already known feature. Feature of Mirai, the destination port is 23 or 23-23. The sequence number and destination address of the TCP packets are the same. Feature of Hajime, a lot of research has been done on Hajime and the communication characteristic of Hajime have been divided into two main categories and studied. In this study, we take their two features and consider them as separate malware. Hajime type 1, sequence number, the upper or lower 16 list of the sequence number of TCP packets will be zero. Hajime type 2, window size, the window size of TCP packets is fixed at 14600. Zero zero. Results and discussion. Before showing the results of the experiment, let me explain the image of the result. The horizontal axis is the time, and the vertical axis is the number of IP addresses. The blue line is the result of the related work method reflecting the infection activity of the malware, and is marked with the symbol unique IP. The red line is the result of proposal method and is labeled new IP to reflect the expanding or shrinking of the inflation. Results and discussion. Hajime type 1. Sequence number. Figure 1 shows the inflation activity from the 1st of January 2016 to December 31st, 2018 and the measurement started on the 1st of January 2016. According to the research, it was confirmed that Hajime was present even before 2016 and in October 2016, the infection activity started to increase. At this time, the spread Hajime infection increased along with the increase in infectious activity. The peak of the spread of the infection was on 12 of January 2017, when approximately 140,000 newly appearing short IP addresses of transmission was identified. It has gradually shrunk until August 2017, but infection activity began to spike in August 2017 and continued until April 2018. Hajime type 2, window size. The trend in the number of short addresses, a packet with the cherished dish, a window size is shown in figure 2. The observation start point is set to the 1st of January 2016. Hajime was confirmed to have been presented even before 2016. It was active in just a few host units until May 2016, from May 2016 onward. Hajime's infection was being spread along with the, a gradual increase in inf infection activity. The peak of the spread on the 12th of January 2017, approximately 140,000 hosts could be identified as the newly appearing source addresses. Since then, the infection has been gradually decreasing until August 2017. From August 2017 to the end of March 2018, it appeared that the infection was active from August 2017 to the end of March 2018, and a large scale of infection activity took place in April. On the other hand, the number of new source addresses decreased during the, this period, and the scale of infection decreased. 
Compare Hajime Type 1 sequence number with Type 2 window size. The packets communicated by Hajime were characterized by a fixed window size over a long period of time. Hajime were reportedly infecting Telenet with a method of repeat attempt using a prepared list of passwords. Around October 2016, a massive outbreak occurred soon after the appearance of the TCP sequence number feature. At this time, the addition of the TCP sequence number feature and the update of the password list suggested that Hajime had been improved. As well as of April 2018, after the TCP sequence number feature was removed and the password list was updated and improved for the second time, large-scale infection activity occurred in early April 2018. We tend to believe that the malware infection will be spread along with the increased infection activity of Hajime and Midai. Looking at the period from October 2017 to April 2018, we can see that why Hajime's infection activity increased but the malware infection shrunk. Therefore, an increase in infection activity does not imply an increase in malware infection. It is important to ensure that the number of newly appearing source addresses is investigated to determine the expanding and shrinking of the malware. Mirai Mirai was not present at all until the 1st of August 2016. Figure 3 shows that it appeared from the 1st of August 2016 and the infection increased in activity and spread. The peak of the spread of the infection was on 21st September 2016. On that day, about 510,000 hosts participated in the infection activity and about 260,000 was newly appearing source IP addresses. Since the peak, the infection situation was expanded and shrunk again. In the second half of 2017, it has shrunk considerably. But on Thursday of November 2017, we can confirm that there was again a large-scale infection activity. On this day, about 500,000 hosts participated in the infection activity, among which about 300,000 was new source IP addresses. The number of new source IP addresses was found to be higher than the number of new source IP addresses at the first peak. And after and after Thursday of November 2017, infection activity dropped sharply and Mirai's infection also shrunk. Conclusion This paper analyzes long-term observation data in the darknet. We were able to determine the source addresses of packets with characteristics of Mirai and Hajime, the IoT malware we analyzed. We also confirmed that Hajime is a malware that existed long before Mirai, and it discovered the modified and improved period of the TCP scan number feature of the packets communicated by Hajime. The result of the study provide a lot of information and clarify the expanding and shrinking of malware which is the realistic feature, thus achieving the purpose of the study. However, when the experiment was conducted, it was difficult and time-consuming to compute due, due to the very large amount of observed data. Future problems should be changed the algorithm for this adjustment and devise a way to process it efficiently. Thank you for listening. I'm Pham Karat from Integration System, from Institute of Integration System in <coughs> the Quiron Trinitan University. I'm very pleased to make a presentation today uh, entitled Improving Power Efficiency of AESI System with Gan Ganyum Knight. Garum Nitrite Supply Moon Nets Power Amplifier.
this outline of my talk. And we now start with the introduction session. Uh, AESA is sought for a tip electronically scan uh, array. The AESA system is why research, develop, and apply in the radar and multifunction wireless system. And typical AESA system structure is so in the slide. In this, um, in this system, there is a active phase array antenna, and uh, each element of array antenna is collected to a transceiver. This design can bring many uh, advantages, uh, and however, there exist some disadvantages in an AESA system, like the show in the slide. In uh, this uh, study, uh, we uh, focus in the power efficiency of the system. Uh, because of the limited of space and the variable uh, power distribution, so the <clears throat> power efficiency is a big challenge of the AESI system. Now we will be continuous with uh, the power efficiency of AESA system. This slide shows a, a description of the power efficiency of AESA system. Uh, the power efficiency depends on many units of system as a power amplifiers unit, the process units and the power supply units, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, where the largest power consuming units are the power amplifier. So we only consider, uh, consider the power efficiency of the power amplifier in the AESA system. Uh, the question of the power added efficiency and the DC uh, power consumption of PA and uh, uh, AESA system include the end transceivers is shown in the slide. And we will use this question, uh, equation uh, to estimate the power efficiency of the system in the following session, uh, session. Now we consider the power distribution in the aperture of the array antenna. Uh, the far field pattern of the nine year array is shown in this slide. Uh, <clears throat> we focus on the complexly excitation coefficients AN. It includes amplitude and the phase uh, information uh, of the signal. Uh, to control the array pattern, we have set a appropriate value for excitation coefficients of the each antenna elements. The beamforming is aptly in the AESA uh, system, allowed to synthesize a specific beam pattern, reduce the silo level and the scan beam. Uh, in order to uh, perform the beamforming, we exploit a certain distribution of the excitation coefficient. Uh, some popular power distribution use are the Taylor and Trebuchet. Uh, in this slide, we show an example uh, of beamforming. Uh, in this slide, we can see a uh, 16 multiple 16 element planar array is applied to Taylor and bar uh, distribu uh, distribution with an equal three uh, to reduce the silo level to the minus uh, 25 dB. Uh, from the reason we can see uh, the beam pattern are in, illustrated in the slide. Uh, from the reason, we can see that the amplitude is not uniformity and is decreased from the center to the edge of array. In this slide, we consider the relationship between operating range and the transmitting power 
from the questions in the slide, the system uh, operating line is uh, proportional to the square root in the wireless communication system or false root in the radar system of the transmitting power uh, so that we can control the transmitting power according to the operating distance to save energy. In short, uh, in the AESI system, the power amplifier output power vary with time and the position in a wide range during the processing process synthesizing a beam pattern and the changing of the operating function or range. Hence, the power amplifier should have a high uh, power added efficient and maintain it uh, in a wide range of the output power. Uh, he is plotting the advantage of the gallium nitride technology uh, with the controllable drain bias voltage corresponding to the required output power. Uh, the gallium nitride uh, supply modulated power amplifier could satisfy the above requirement of the AESI system. In this session, a uh, gallium nitride supply modulation uh, power amplifier design will be described in the detail. The structure of the proposed um, power amplifier is shown in the slide. Uh, some requirement of the power amplifier is that it operating in the expand frequency and it should uh, have a high power efficiency in the wide band, wide bandwidth from 9 to 9.8 gigahertz and a wide range of output power. <clears throat> uh, in this study, uh, we use the uh, transistor is the gun nitride ham TGF uh, 2977 uh, SM of the Quavo company. And the uh, power amplifier operates in class AB bias condition. In this structure, the input uh, matching network and the output matching network are implemented using two transmission lines with uh, different characteristic impedance. Uh, this transmission lines uh, function as low pass finder. It's not that we will note that the input uh, and output matching network are designed without using any harmonic uh, termination elements. And the low pass finder technique is employed to increase the power amplifier bandwidth. The schematic and layout of the desired power amplifier is shown in this slide. The optimum source and load impedance were found by using the load pool simulation in the ADS software. And the last signal performance of the desired power amplifier is uh, evaluated and optimized by using a harmonic balance uh, analysis in the ADS software. To maintain the high efficiency of the power amplifier, uh, uh, for a wide range of the output power, we utilize the supply modulation technique. The layout design of the proposed power amplifier is uh, relied as microstrip lights with a roller uh, for 350B substrate and is shown in the slide with total dimension. Dimension, dimension is the, about uh, 27 multiple 11 uh, square millimeter. In this slide indicates the small signal and large signal simulates performance of the desired power amplifier. Uh, it can be seen that both input and output return losses is high bit low from uh, 9 to 10 gigahertz. And the uh, desired power amplifier is the uh, uh, stable in the frequency range. And 
the designs on the tire have a wide bandwidth stability and have a high power efficiency. Uh, the power added efficiency of the design power amplifier uh, always uh, larger than 35% in, in the frequency range. The power added efficiency of the, the design power amplifier at the fundamental frequency is uh, 9.4 gigahertz is described in this slide. In the figure, the solid lines are the, lot, are the power added efficiency of the power amplifier for 10 different fixed values of the drain bias voltage from 15 to the 32 voltage. And the dust line is the power efficiency of the power amplifier for modulated drain by a bias voltage case. When drain by drain bias voltage is properly controlled, the power amplifier maintains a value of uh, power added efficiency higher than uh, 40% in 10 dB of the output power backup. So in this session, we analyze the power efficiency of the AES I system using the design power amplifier with various power distribution at different array scales and transmitting power level. In this slide, uh, show the variation of the power added efficiency of the power amplifiers according to the position of them on a linear uh, array with the 16 uh, elements using Tyler and Bart um, distribution with N equal three and the silo level is the minus the 25 dB. Uh, we can see that the output power of the array element declines from the center to S of uh, the array. Uh, this leads to, to reduce of the power added efficiency of the power uh, amplifiers using the fixed drain by frontis with the VD uh, echo, the 32 frontis. We can see the blue line. In contrast, the power added efficiency of the power amplifiers can be significantly improved by the using uh, supply modulated power amplifiers, the red line in the slide. Uh, in this slide, we analyze the system power added eff efficiency with various power distribution at different array scales. Uh, the consider system work at the frequency of uh, 9.4 gigahertz and using planar rectangular uniform arrays. The array size um, for 16, S16 and 16, multiple 16 uh, elements. Obviously, the solution using the gallium nitride uh, supply modulated uh, power amplifier return a significantly improve the power added efficiency. Uh, it's, uh, they are always higher than 58% compared with the one using the fixed supply voltage, always lower than the 37%. The systematic a uh, power added efficiency improvement is determined by the difference between the systematic uh, power added efficiency using the supply uh, modulated power amplifier and using convenient uh, power amplifier at the same other condition. The equation is shown in the slide, the red color. 
as shown in the table in the right hand, <coughs> the systematic uh, power added efficiency is improved from uh, 15 point. 33% uh, to 18.28%. Uh, In this slide, we consider the performance of solution using the supply net power modifier on the systematic power added efficiency according to the variation of the transmitting uh, power. And a ESA system with uh, 16, a multiple 16 elements array is considered. The output power decreased at zero to six dB from the maximum output power. And <clears throat> the systematic power added efficient is shown in the left figure and the higher uh, from the reason we can see that the higher decreased power level, the higher systematic PAE improvement. And conclusion, uh, the paper investigates the inequivalent power distribution on the antenna aperture of an AESA system, resulting from the uh, synthesizing a beam pattern in order to reduce the silo level and allow to alert its power corresponding to operating lines. We propose using gallium nitride technology and the supply modulation techniques to the power amplifier to improve the power efficiency of a ESI system. Uh, the paper also introduced a forward expand uh, Gunnum Nitrides uh, supply net power amplifier designed for AESA system. And uh, the simulation recent indicates that the PAE of the system is significantly improved by using the design Gunnum Nitrides supply net power amplifiers. Thank you so much for your interest and attention. Thank you for the presentation. And the time is limited. So uh, if any people in our section have a question, we have to tell you. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I will thank you for your uh, question. Uh, in this slide, we have show the small signal uh, simulated, uh, simulated performance of the design power amplifier. Uh, we can see that the stability uh, factor is always less than one. So the design power amplifier is uh, stable uh, in frequency range. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, hi. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nguyen Thanh Hung. I come from Hanoi University of Science and Technology. So today I'm very glad to present our research about uh, Smart shoe based on battery, <coughs> smart shoe based on battery free Bluetooth low energy sensor. And uh, let's move to the first one. Uh, my presentation includes in, uh, four sections. In the first one, uh, due, to, uh, uh, due to the data collecting, is is now very popular, very popular and, in and important. So, uh, uh, we targeting to healthcare application. Uh, to do that, we need to have uh, enough data collecting. So, uh, and also based on the interconnection and uh, mo mo mobility, the wireless sensor node is uh, 
uh, our targeting to design also based on uh, the uh, based on increasing the lifespan and uh, we need to design a low power sensor node and in and uh, in this paper i also use energy harvesting to expand our life life uh, our sensor node life so based on two reasons we have proposed our idea is mushroom bios battery free the second one is the system design our system proposed a healthcare application ble communication standard for low power and uh, the third one is we are measuring three parameter is running speed step landing edge and strike this data is for uh, running analysis and the system have uh, four part the first one is the harvesting and storage the harvesting and storage have the tribo electric effect generating a uh, generator uh, this energy has generated from tribo electric and store in the capacitor super capacitor the second one is the sensor which collecting the data transmit this data through ble standard to a wideband and to a antenna so let's move to the first one how we design this sensor based on what we need to measure the running speed and the strike we propose a accelerometer sensor which MMA 8451Q based on its uh, range and power consumption. The next one is the landing edge. Uh, obviously, we need a gyroscope for measure how fast we foot, uh, how fast foot we are, and uh, <coughs> how fast the angle is trained. This data, uh, this two sensor is controlled by BLE communication IC, which is DA14585. This BLE IC is very low power consumption. It's only take about 11 microwatt per transmit a day, for transmit a data. The next one in the sensor is the antenna. We propose a EFA antenna at 2.245 gigahertz. Uh, this uh, this sensor, uh, as you can see in the the figure, we have uh, we have designed it. The reflector coefficient is under ten, and when we integrate it in the circuit, the reflector coefficient is below fifty dB. 15 dB uh, for for new for manufacture uh, or manufacture error. We also propose a parameter study for turning this antenna is uh, L5, the length of this edge for turning the parameter. The next one is the sensor placement versus the radiation button of the antenna. Uh, we have an uh, issue when we uh, we we have issue in when we placing this model in the shoe is that where what ensure us to the transmit is not fail. So we uh, have simulation the sensor in the shoe, and as you can see, the radiation button of the shoe in uh, three position and uh, the parameter we are co we uh, we consider is the reflector coefficient and the radiation button of the antenna as you can see the the antenna near the show is the best one after that is the antenna near the hill the uh, these two position is quite good enough for us to implement our sensor in there. 
now let's move to the second problem of us is how we uh, harvesting energy from Chibo Electric. In this paper, we uh, propose a basic tank, stru tank structure is the vertical separate contraction. Uh, we have uh, analysis and uh, and uh, we have built a equivalent circus and equation for initial design. Based on this equation, we can uh, determine how much power we can generate it from uh, the generator triple electric. And uh, we have fabrication and measure the power we have and uh, we have harvesting in this tank. First one is a single layer. We have harvest 11.26 microwatt per full step. And we propose a four layer tank. We have uh, 80 microwatt per step. Uh, I think uh, uh, when, when we measure uh, we have addicted. Uh, we have addicted into one uh, ten micro uh, ten mega ohm. So uh, this eighty microwatt according to twelve micro joule, and uh, based on our, our calculation, each uh, each frame transmit by DA one uh, by Bluetooth IC has only consumed eight micro joule. So this four layer tank should be enough to, uh, to um, supply our power, supply power to our sensor. Now uh, I want to compare with related work. Uh, the first one is the energy harvesting. Uh, we have compared with into many uh, previous work. And uh, we uh, in this um, in this uh, system we need to make the size is small so the energy harvest power we harvest is smaller than in uh, reference five and six and the second one is the sensor node power consumption because uh, in this in this system we. Uh, focusing in power consumption. So uh, our work is only consumption 11 microwatt, but uh, in uh, reference seven, eight, and nine, consume at least 33 microwatt, uh, milliwatt. So in conclusion, in this, in this research, we have designed a low power consumption wireless sensor node uh, the maximum power consumption is 11 milliwatt. The second one is we had research the, re the relationship between the radiation pattern of the antenna with the position of the, uh, the sensor placement. And the third one is the we has proposed the solution for the battery free VLE sensor node is the Chibo electric generator harvesting energy, which is Maximum power harvest is 80 microwatt, which equivalent to 12 microzone per foot step. Uh, uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, I'm glad to answer it. Thank you very much. Thank you, the presenter, for his presentation. So I, I think that the healthcare is not so the, the topic and the, it can be a product that we can use in the future. So I hope to have a, the best informed the related to this product and this presentation. But uh, but 
but uh, I wonder about the 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 right time of the divide because when uh, the soup moving, it's many pressure on the divide. Uh, so the idea is good, but the light time of uh, the battery and also the device. So I want to know the how, how long. Um, well, uh, the first one is there are in the... Uh, <clears throat> or or you, you, can, you, you can give the, uh, the solution for protect the device when the device uh, under the high pressure. Um, uh, to, uh, to protect our device in under the shoe, we have uh, designed it for special shoe, uh, like a very thick uh, shoe. You, you see, it's really a, it, a polymer uh, in the shoe, in the shoe. Yes, we uh, implement our device under it and and uh, on top of the, our, on top of our device also have a polymer to to reduce the pressure on the, our device and our device also protection by our by it in case it uh, the light time so we provide two solution of power consumption uh, of the power supply. The first one, if you want to use battery, so uh, based on our cal calculation, is estimate 15, 15 days transmit uh, every 12 millisecond. Uh, it's the, the frequency is 50 hertz to transmit transmit per package. Uh, if you transmit a packet every 12 milliseconds, it will last, it will last for 15 days, but our device is have a trigger to when you uh, wear the shoe, it's when you wear the shoe, like, the device is work, when you take off the shoe, the device is sleeping. So the lifespan can uh, expand about two months Yes, uh, if you wear it eight hour a day, so uh, if you see uh, 45 day. Uh, for our prototype is, uh, it cost about 500,000 dollars, uh, Vietnam dollars, yes. Thank you for interesting question. So about the timeline, it depends on the frequency of transmitting data and of course, depending on the how, time, how much time you wear the shoe. And um, uh, now we will move to another question. Do you have a, any other question? Yes, please. Uh, the temperature sensor is also embedded in the uh, accelerometer uh, because uh, in uh, in um, in MMA eight four five one is also have temperature sensor for it. So we also use for measure our temperature in our shoe and. Uh, the gyroscope is for application is landing edge when you uh, when your foot is landing. Uh, this analysis is fully 
uh, I don't, this this device is fully analyzes your running step, every running step of you. Yes, wait. Uh, in this device, we propose analysis, uh, the running, running, uh, running. Uh, oh, I think uh, this device analyzes the run, your running speed, your stride, your landing edge, and also the how much step or how much step do you run? Is yes, that is counting. I think that for data is enough to analyze your running. Uh, 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 in this device, we uh, not propose a heartbeat because uh, the heartbeat. Um, the heartbeat sensor need to place your in near your place where, where you contact your feet. The sensor need to contact your feet. So if you try too too strong, it can be damage the sensor. So I think the heartbeat sensor is very uh, is um, reliable in the watch. It's much more reliable than the uh, shoe. Thank you. So we have uh, the last question from the online uh, participant, participant from Miss um, Dao Thị Nga. So her question is, what is the generation electricity used for? And uh, can you use it to track mobile phone? Mm. Uh, okay, the generate Electricity is used for expanding the lifetime of the of the device. Uh, as I mentioned, you have two solutions for this device. The first one is using battery. The, the second one is using this Chibo electric generator. This Chibo electric generator can be used to power up your device when the supercapacitor is pre-charged. So uh, this option can be made. And the second one is, could you chart? Uh, the second one is if this can chart a mobile phone, basically uh, in this, our, I don't, in this, in play, uh, in this uh, tank we have fabricated, uh, the power harvest is too small. But in the but in the world research, I have seen that the Chibo Electric is can be used to charge the phone uh, in in many subway in uh, I don't I don't remember the exactly location. Uh, this Chibo Electric is under the the land, so when you step on it, it can generate uh, enough power to uh, power up. The, the lead in the in night for saving power. Uh, thank you for your question. Thank you. So I hope that Mr. Dautinga, Ms. Dautinga, can you hear the, the, the reply from the author? Okay, thank you presenter for the interesting presentation. Hello, so welcome to this talk. I'm Sylvain Guillet, uh, the Chief Technical Officer at uh, Secure IC. And I'm very glad uh, to be talking about physically inclinable functions. More specifically, in this talk, 
I will uh, highlight how uh, puffs should be designed to resist against uh, attacks. So this topic is uh, seldom addressed. And therefore, I want, first of all, to motivate why the puff uh, need to uh, resist uh, tampering. And uh, I will also uh, show a technology, uh, namely SecureIC loop puff, uh, which is able to, in practice, resist uh, tampering attempts. So here is the agenda for my talk. Uh, I will start with a quick introduction about uh, what's a puff and uh, what are the classical use cases. What can it be used for? Then I'll show how a puff uh, can implement an anti-counterfeiting uh, countermeasure. Uh, after that, I'll explain that um, a puff actually requires some uh, specific uh, configuration and uh, settings uh, before it can be uh, completely useful. Therefore, I will mention about the, the complete life cycle, okay, which needs to be uh, captured uh, into the PUF design. Um, after that, I will explain what are the security requirements under the prism of uh, the standardization with respect to uh, uh, the, the PUF, uh, so what, what are the security features we expect and, uh, and how we can test and evaluate them. And then uh, I will arrive to uh, the point where I can explain how uh, attacks can affect the PUF and what are the, the solutions, obviously. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, a puff is a silicon object which uh, receives as input a challenge and uh, outputs a response. Uh, the remarkable property of a puff is that for two different puffs, if you input the same challenge, you get two different responses. Actually, they are always the same responses, but it, they will be different for two different instances of the puff. Okay, so it's pretty neat to uh, identify a chip or actually to generate a, something unique, so like a unique key. Uh, so depending, uh, the responses are made public or are kept confidential. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is a standardization uh, ongoing uh, with respect to the PUF uh, at uh, ISO. Uh, namely in the working group three uh, in the subcommittee 27. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, very glad to be the, the lead editor of this international standard. And so uh, publication of the part one uh, is actually uh, to be decided uh, early this year, 2021. Okay. Uh, let me uh, give to you a few examples of uh, silicon puffs. Some of them in FPGA, like Intel Altera, others in uh, Xilinx FPGA. You can see here the, the logic cells, and others in different uh, ASIC technologies. Okay, uh, this guy here is a test chip. You can see there are 49 uh, different puffs. They are all unique. Okay, though they are reliable, meaning that it's the same response for the same uh, challenge. Okay, another uh, test chip here uh, in uh, ST Microelectronics 28 uh, FDSOI uh, process. Um, so uh, there is here a, a, a puff. So uh, the kind of puffs I will be talking about uh, are called uh, silicon puffs, and uh, in particular, uh, puffs which can be implemented using standard cells, okay, which are portable across different uh, technologies. So the use cases of puff are uh, master key uh, generation, but also a chip ident identification. So if, if the, the, the responses are, are published and the uh, chip authentication using a challenge response protocol, which is previously 
recorded and then uh, replayed uh, live uh, on the chip. So um, this is a, a, an example actually uh, for a strong puff where uh, we each response is one bit. So we need to input different challenges. For instance, the challenges can be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. It's also possible to increase the entropy and the reliability to choose challenges according to different uh, selection process, for instance, uh, part of a, a code, linear or, or not. Okay. So the, the puff, I will be uh, showing examples and also experiments on is the loop puff because um, it is based on a self-oscillating loop here, which when we start, uh, uh, so uh, this, this XOR you see behaves like an inverter. And so there, there will be a token uh, running like crazy here at a given speed, which depends actually on a challenge which configures all the delays elements here. Uh, this configuration uh, is uh, leveraging the uh, the effects of the silicon, okay? And so we count how many uh, rounds uh, there are. And after a given timeout, we see how many loops there were, okay? This number of loops is unique uh, per chip. And uh, now assume you input challenge and, and you, you, you get uh, the, the, num the, the delay, yeah, the number of uh, rounds. You input the opposite challenge uh, so you get D of C uh, complemented. And uh, actually the bit of a uh, response you get is uh, whether, you know, it's a test, whether or not DC is greater or smaller uh, compared to the, uh, C complemented. Okay. So let's see the use case with uh, respect to anti-counterfeiting. Uh, anti, uh, uh, so you see, uh, I have a chip here and I'm manufacturing this chip in some country. Okay, it's not my country. I, I have no control over the, the fab. And what happens, uh, I will inject a key. Uh, actually, I will ask a third party, uh, which is uh, the security owner to do so. And the security owner will also give me uh, the, the key so that in a second phase, I can uh, play a kind of uh, authentication protocol. So also this protocol is, is, is uh, using a challenge and a response, but it's, it's not from a puff, it's just regular challenge response protocol like we use in cryptography. Okay, so the problem is that actually the attack surface is quite large because you see the same secret key is uh, actually at three different locations, which can be an issue. Let me just uh, show this example. This famous company, uh, Gemalto, uh, was hacked, uh, the headquarters, and all the keys were revealed, you know? So there was no use to break uh, the chips uh, because the keys were directly recovered uh, from the, the safe itself, okay? And uh, another issue is that cloning is possible because it's possible to inject the same key twice uh, in two different chips, okay? So overbuilding is not uh, swart uh, by this key. Therefore, um, there's a protocol leveraging a puff. So the puff is actually used to generate a private key and uh, this private key will yield a, a public key. So um, the security owner will actually never see the private key but will sign the public key. So we'll get this certificate here. Based on this certificate, the um, operator can uh, engage into a uh, an authentication with, with a chip, okay? But as you can see, there are no two chips which are identical in this case. So no overbuilding and uh, the secret key is only in the chip. So I cannot break there or there to extract the, the private key. It's only uh, within this uh, chip. Okay, so uh, to finish the big picture about PUFs, you need to know that uh, there are at least three uh, steps before actually you uh, deploy your PUF. Uh, the pre-silicon uh, stage is where actually you validate 
that your, your puff is behaving good in at least in theory, okay? Um, then there is the enrollment, which, um, which is uh, the process uh, by which actually um, we uh, get some uh, helper data from the puff in order to later on uh, correct errors, if any, okay? So this step is not mandatory, but it's usually uh, implemented Uh, to, to increase the, the reliability of the puff. And then there are also some health tests. So it's, it should be uh, possible to check that the puff is, is working correctly. And that's important because um, I will be talking about puff used in adversary, uh, adversarial conditions. Okay. So security requirements are listed there. We have some functional properties namely steadiness, randomness, uniqueness, and predictability and, and clonability. And uh, the nice thing about uh, those uh, different metrics is that they can um, be evaluated by entropy, okay? especially uh, the, the three first uh, ones, okay? uh, only depending um, how um, we uh, uh, compute the entropy on, you see. So steadiness, it means that just we repeat the same uh, challenge response all the time, over, over time, over the t-dimension. Randomness is uh, actually with respect to the bit and the challenge uh, plane. Okay, so we, we vary uh, the, the, the challenge and then we measure different responses and we see how uh, random it is. And regarding entropy, it's uh, actually from device to device, hence the, the D here. Okay, uh, and predictability and, and clonability are features which are um, more um, related to qualitative analysis of the design. So uh, it's uh, it should be uh, evaluated. Actually, it cannot be measured precisely. And I, I want to finish with this requirement, which which we don't. Uh, Uh, mentioned here, but actually we need to have a resistance to attacks. Actually, it is implicitly into this table, um, but uh, uh, because this table sh sh should remain true that we have a high entropy, you see here, um, in all conditions, even if I am uh, perturbing the system or even if I, there is some leakage, I will spy on. Okay, actually, I will, I will start with the, the leakage. So let's see how a puff should resist uh, attacks. Uh, side channel attacks consist in eavesdropping like the power or the electromagnetic field and trying to figure out what is the puff value. So as you can see here, using some signal processing and uh, sophisticated equipments to, to measure the, the power or, or the EM signal, it's possible to, to, to guess depending on the challenge uh, what is the oscillating frequency. And so if the, the, the two challenges C and the complemented C are, are zero and one, then I, I know that in this chip, the answer, uh, the response will be one because F1 is greater than F2, okay, typically. Yeah? So how to resist? Of course, we can implement countermeasures, which consists in randomization. So instead of applying C and complemented C, I can implement Uh, complemented C and complemented of complemented of C, which is C. So basically, it means I can swap the two uh, uh, challenges, you see, uh, the, which is explained here in a publication by uh, uh, Lars Tebelman uh, and his co authors at COSADI uh, 2020. Okay, so you see the, the reference uh, here. Regarding fault attacks, now this is about perturbation. So, how can we do this perturbation? For instance, we can increase the temperature. There are other means like also playing with the voltage. Now it's not spying, but it is setting the chip operating in a very low voltage typically, you see. And we need uh, the, the puff to resist such attacks. So now you see I'm, I'm cooling or at the opposite, I am uh, heating up the, the chip. So the number of rounds will, will vary a lot. Actually, when, when it is more hot, it is oscillating more slowly, as you can see here. Um, it's, it's becoming lazy, kind of, okay. But uh, what's important, so for the two challenges, C and complemented C, I must have uh, that the order, uh, like, like the frequency zero and one in, in the previous slide, should be the same. 
And actually, which, which is something we, we see here. So by design, because the loop path is uh, operating as a difference uh, and that the difference uh, never cross, you see. So this um, red here is always uh, uh, slower than the, the blue, which is, which is on, on top here. And so we can even compute a reliability uh, corresponding to, uh, to the attacks. And uh, actually, we, we, we will get a false uh, uh, answer when, uh, so the, the blue actually is interpreted as, uh, you know, lower than the, the, the red, okay? Which we can compute uh, with a formula which we, we provide here, actually it's contributed in the paper. Uh, and so we can evaluate it. Uh, and actually it's a very low uh, probability of error, you see. So this path is typically suitable for operating in harsh environments, uh, so suitable like for automotive market, but also uh, in a very uh, a high uh, cybersecurity context. So to conclude, um, so the paths uh, should also be evaluated uh, in front of uh, fault attacks, okay, for safety reasons and, and for uh, security uh, reasons. And I, as a matter of fact, you know, when the system is booting, um, we, we need the puff uh, as a master key. And the boot is the more sensitive uh, time uh, in, in the, the wake up of the system because the countermeasures are not enabled yet. And actually the, the master key is the most valuable key. Uh, all the uh, other keys will be uh, derived the keys of a lesser value, okay? Um, okay, and the uh, final uh, notice, uh, I'm currently working uh, within RISC-5 International uh, to uh, think about uh, the extension of the instruction set uh, for managing a puff. Okay, so you, you are welcome to contact me uh, to, to collaborate on this topic. Thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to thank my co-authors, Jean-Luc Danger, Michael Pell, Sophia Anceni, and uh, Youssef Suissi. Thanks a lot. Good morning, everybody. My name is Võ Minh Thong. I'm a lecturer from Faculty of Electrical and Electronics and Engineering, Yutang University. Today, I'm very happy to attend the International Conference on Industrial Network and Engineering System in its 2021, with paper, Performance Analysis of Small Ball as Computing Applied Uplink Norma with RF Energy Harvesting. My presentation is divided into four parts. The first one, I will give you some general information about the mobile X computing integrated into 5G system. Next, I summarize some related work and emphasize the main contribution of our work. The second one, I will talk about the system model, the assumption, the communication protocol and time flow chart. The third one, I discuss about the performance analysis of an optimization problem with detailed mathematical formula. And the last one, I will give you some numerical results and some discussion. Okay, let's go to the introduction session. With the first development of mobile internet and internet of things, mobile data traffic is anticipated to witness explosive growth in the year to come. To support this growth, both academics and industrial community have conducted extensive research to decide the 5G wireless network. Mobile X computing MEC and normal techniques are recognized as a key emerging technology for 5G network. The idea of MEC is to provide computing capability to proximity of user and within radio access network, thereby reducing the latency and improving the quality of service. Why normal allows multiple users to share the same resources, leading to a significant increase in the network capacity. Besides us, the combination of energy harvesting with MEC in a single system offers great potential to solve fundamental limitation limitation of traditional system, limited battery lifetime, unstable grid power supply, 
and low computing capability. To understand the issue more clearly, research works on MEC, ROMA, and RS and reharvesting are services in the next session. The first example is the paper of JS on, on the performance of optimization for MEC network using uplink ROMA, in which to use a op block that tied to an MEC server located accessible to ensure system delay constraints. Also have a view to the derivative approach to maximize the system performance in terms of successful computation probability SCB with three schemes: complex local computation, partial computation of blocking, and complex of blocking. The second assembly, the work of Har S on a novel protocol for mobile S computing network applies Dowling Norma. The author proposed the Dowling Norma MEC system with two access bones, a thick computation for limited energy user. The author proposed an APS algorithm based on channel gain to enhance system security performance. Or is the work of Gessia. The author proposed a multiple user assistance by a power beacon in the present of the ever proper. A set bone and power beacon broadcast the RF energy to user then the user simultaneously uploads the task to access bone. A solution based on particle swarm optimization to maximize the system secrecy computation efficiency. So, the MEC NOMA RF and reharvesting issue need to be studied further. In this study, we consider the RF and reharvesting NOMA MEC system over relay fading channel. The main contribution of our paper are as follow. The first one, I investigate the RX and the reharvesting normal MEC over relay fading. The second one, we derive the cloud form expression of successful computation probability for the system. Furthermore, we provide numerical, numerical results to investigate the impact of network parameter, transmit power, time switching ratio, the task length, and the bandwidth. To verify the RF and reharvesting normal deployment effectiveness in the MEC network. And the last one, we propose an optimization algorithm based on genetics algorithm to find the optimal time switching ratio so that the SCB is maximized. Simulation re result so that our proposed algorithm can improve the SCB. In the next session, I will present the system protocol and the mathematical formula detail. The system model for an upslink normal MEC with RF and reharvesting is based at Phase 1, in which two energy constraints user U1 and U2 are blocked the task to the MEC access bone through uplink normal by using the energy harvesting from the access bone. All the way are assumed to have a single antenna and operate in the half duplex mode. Assuming that U1 and U2 have L1 bits and L2 bits to be compute and they may not be able to compute locally within latency budget due to limited computation ability. Therefore, U1 and U2 block the task to access bone over relay fading with RF energy from access bone. We propose system broken at feature 2 in the first phase. User have its energy from access bone during tau zero equal alpha t, where alpha denotes the time switching ratio and t stands for a transmission block time. In the second time, user apply uplink normal scheme to overlock the task to access bone during tau tau one. In the third phase, access bone decodes the task of user and compute them during tau tau two. As the last phase. User download the result from access bone during tau 3. Tau 3 is a zoom very small compared with transmission time and thus it is in lattice. In this session, we analyze the performance by derivation the expression of successful computation probability SCB denoted by Phs a formula below. The Vs e probability that on tasks are successfully computed with the given time, where T1 and T2 are the transmission latency of U1 and U2, respectively. 
B is a bandwidth. As a grammar, uh, signal to interfere in plus noise ratio for MEC server to decode the signal from user. In order to evaluate the system performance, we attend the three lemma. The first one, under relay fading, the cloud form expression of the SCB for its consider system is given by VSE1 is X follow. The second one, VSU2 is very similar of the lemma 1. It presents the SCB of user 2. And the last one, the system performance SCB VS is as follows. We present the detailed proofing in the appendix in our paper. In this session, we describe the mass, maximum SCB problem as follows. The first constraint ensures that all tasks are processed within the maximum allowed delay, and second, requires the times within the ratio contained. To solve the MSCB problem, we propose to use the genetics algorithm GA as algorithm 1. GA is an evolutionary algorithm simulating biological evolution in nature and following Darwin theory of evolution. We use the SCB of system as finished function using the crossover and mutation process on population in which evolutionary cycle we to a new, more responsive generation, meaning larger SCB. In the final, we get the best alpha times within ratio for SCB at trees like this, the optimum value. We easy to find the algorithm complexity as follow and demonstrate the covariance of algorithm using grass methods. Now we move to the last session. Numerical result and discussion. The Monte Carlo simulation are used to verify the analytical result. The K parameter U in the simulation of the works are provided in table 1. We can see the impact of average transmission at NR and times within ratio alpha. It is very easy to assert that both user SCB increase as the average transmission at NR increase. So that the increasing the transmission power can improve system performance. Another point to see here is when increasing the alpha from 0 to 1, the SCB tends to increasing gradually, achieving the maximum value, and then decrease. It can be explained that when alpha increase, the user will have more time to harvest RF energy and use that plentiful energy in uploading tasks. However, when alpha gets close to 1, User do not have enough time to unblock the task, resulting in an SCB decree. It also proves the existence of alpha makes the SCB risk maximum value. Figure 6 depicts the impact of length of task U1 and the bandwidth on system performance. In this experiment, we increase the U1 task length while keeping the length of task of U2. We observe that the increasing the length of U1 reducing its performance. However, it contributes to improving the SCB of U2. Another observation is that increasing the bandwidth can improve system performance. In the case very high bandwidth, the task length does not affect system performance much. Mm. The figure A describes the comparison among the optimal algorithm and non-optimal approach in terms of ICB. With the non-optimal approach, we use fixing switching time radio uh, bond 1, bond 4, bond A to evaluate system performance. Results show that the UMSCB GA give a higher SCB than the K not using optimal algorithm. Furthermore, to highlight the advantage of MSCB GA, we compare it into the MSCB BA. This is an algorithm based on brutal force. The result shows that the algorithm gives the same result. However, it should be noted that the algorithm complexity of brutal force is always higher. The result shows that the 
our proposes algorithm improves system performance. We next to the final session conclusion. In this paper, we consider the uplink RF energy harvesting normal MEC network, specifically to energy constraints user harvest RF energy from the accessible to unlock the task. We derive the expression of successful computation probability of two user and of system. We propose a low complexity approach based on the GA and achieve optimal system performance. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Hi everyone. I would like to quickly introduce myself. I am Elif Ak from Istanbul Technical University. I am a PhD student and I am working with Professor Bak Canberk. On behalf of the Nima Nejaflu and Selin Cesar, I will present this great work. As you know, in these days, we are all encountered with different difficulties and unfortunately, they are not able to present their own work. I am glad to be here with you today. Um, as an outline, uh, I am planning to begin with introduction uh, with a, as, a, a, as a baseline, as a background for content delivery networks. And we will introduce challenges, motivations and contributions. Then uh, we will look at our proposed system architecture. Then uh, we will show some performance evaluation criteria, then conclude the presentation. Content delivery networks or shortly CDNs are real backbones of the today's communication. It is a cloud technology actually and responsible for internet packet shipping. In other words, um, the name, uh, as you can see in the legend, origin server is the main server which contains many contents belonging to content providers. More specifically, Let's say content provider is one of the e-commercial websites and origin server holds many HTML, CSS or image, image contents of this imaginary e-commerce website. On the other hand, origin shield and edge servers are two specific servers which belongs to CDN's companies. And as an end, or as an end user, uh, us actually, when we want to access this e-commerce website, Instead of the accessing origin server itself, we are connecting to CDN company server to download contents much, much faster. That was the actually short introduction to the CDN technology, uh, which this research focus. And with the rise of online social networks, the amount of user generated contents produced dramatically incre increased and as, uh, as a big portion of the content produced by online social networks are having the characteristic of unpopular content. In other words, um, just a small portion of people are interested with these content instead of uh, like e-commerce access, e-commerce websites. Those contents with fewer requests will be in a battle, uh, battle for survival with more popular contents. This situation is shown in, in the figure. This figure shows the request made for three different content providers uh, objects over a certain period of time. Uh, these content providers are shown as an A, B, C, and objects belonging to content provider A have lower popularity, uh, in other words, lower number of requests per object compared to content provider B and C, and therefore, if we serve all these contents from the same cache pool, cache replacement algorithms such as LRU, least recently used, or others, it doesn't matter, will evict contents with lower to open up space for upcoming traffic. 
the behavior of content provider A is very similar to online social networks. The result is lower hit ratio for unpopular contents, which in the, some cases may even add to overall time to first bite. This is the another criteria. This is the another important metric in the CDNs. Um, so by adding the another hope, and uh, this low cash hit ratio will consequently affect the quality of experience and quality of service, of course. So, um, uh, and CDS companies are targeting to provide similar performance for all their customers. So this is a problematic at the end. And in the initial time of CDS, single level leaf node model was used. Some network architectures are still using this model. But later on, two-level hierarchic models are better, more generally, hierarchic models are proposed. But today's model use static hierarchic models, which one time is built, it will never be changed. Moreover, when we analyze the distribution of content requests, we can observe that it exactly suits the zip distribution. And this observation also points out the requirement of dynamic solution instead of the static hierarchic models. So in this research, in this research, a new data-driven two-level hierarchical caching topology is proposed to deal with dropping out of unpopular contents uh, and to provide dynamic and adaptive caching. In, other, in order to do this, Requests and edge access patterns of CDN servers are modeled, and uh, CDN's edge servers are grouped according to similar contents and request behaviors. So, uh, let's look at the proposed system architecture. In the proposed network model, two main roles are introducing distribution surrogate servers, DSS, and selected surrogate servers. SSS. So um, the centroid of each cluster, which we call the selected surrogate servers, I will be used triple S uh, in the later presentation more shortly, shown in the figure, will act as an origin shield server in CDNs. And it's providing a higher hit ratio and lower latency. On the other side, requests from clients first land on the distribution storage servers, in other words, edge servers. In case of cache miss in the distribution storage servers, the request will be handled to um, that clusters, the selected storage server. If the selected storage server or triple S has the content, it will pass it to the distribution storage servers. Otherwise, the triple S server will ask the origin server of the content provider for the content and gets it and deliver to the, uh, delivers it to distribution storage server. And a copy of content will be cached, obviously, on the selected storage server and will also act as a shield, as a shield for the origin server by reducing the number of requests for the same content from the same cluster to just only one. Uh, this is the actual general architecture, general model of the proposed system architecture. Uh, in more uh, deeply, the system architecture is shown in this figure. These role assignments mentioned in the previous page are done after the measurements and calculations shown in the, in, in the figure in the system architecture. This uh, system model shows the proposed uh, system design and contains two main parts, actually. Uh, first one is edge site model and second one is calculation model. The final output of these two modules uh, are the roles for the servers naming DS DSS and SSS, which we discuss in here. Edge site model run in the server, edge servers and calculation model is the centralized controller for full with the calculation works. Let's begin the details of um, each module one by one by one. So in the edge side module, 
uh, there are two jobs inside it. The first one is tail status, tail stat uh, are saved, uh, and these are the total number of received requests and total number of requested objects. These numbers are recorded in a in a period of time. So the second submodule is H resource measures. Uh, this module record the hardware usage like CPU, this input output uh, or the network bandwidth and calculates the uh, load average at the end and send it to the centralized module. The second module is weight calculation module in, inside the calculation module. In the weight calculation module, it builds the direct graph by calculating similarity weight between servers. This calculation strategy is uh, shown in the formula. Here, similar objects between E and J is divided by total number of objects in, in the node I. And then it is calculated by, uh, it is actually multiplied by logarithm of total number of requests at node I divided by number of requests at node I and J for similar objects plus one. And some of you might similar with this formula, which is an intuition from TFIDF formula. TFIDF is a similarity calculation frequently used in natural language processing researches and text retrieval, obviously. And visual description is shown in the given graph. Red nodes show CDN servers and H between nodes are calculated weights. And number, uh, numbers besides the nodes shows the object and request counts. Um, then in the graph symmetrization module here, since clustering algorithms work well in undirected graphs, graph symmetrization module transform directed graph to undirected graph. For that transformation, bibliometric uh, symmetrization is chosen since the graph is complete graph. After getting undirected graph, cluster formation module use Markov clustering algorithm to cluster CDN servers. It begin with initial stochastic matrix, iterate over random mouse, and it is important to note that the cluster numbers, number of clusters uh, are not mm, known in the beginning of the algorithm. So this is really useful for this uh, use case. After forming cluster, each cluster load is calculated to validate clusters. In other words, even if one of the form cluster is already in heavy load, then cluster formation module is recalled. If every cluster formation is accepted, then centroid selection process begin. In centroid selection, basically, least load work server is chosen as a centroid to provide high capacity for original servers. As a performance evaluation here, and for the testbed environment, 7H nodes each assign a case size, which is less than what is needed to store all the objects in the cache uh, are used. The reason for this decision is to create a cache competition situation explained earlier between popular and unpopular contents. All these seven nodes have similar hardware and place in the data center in the Germany with, with uh, physically same location in order to provide same latency conditions for all servers. In order to simulate content request traffic, variety zips alpha parameters are used and LRU is used as a cache re replacement algorithm, just as in the production CDS. After I mentioned threshold metric is set to 75% at the end heuristically, and um, it can be determined with random initial threshold and changing the parameter, uh, the parameter the according to performance of the system. As an evaluation criteria, two metrics are used, cache hit ratio, uh, in other words, 
as the ratio between the number of requested contents, uh, contents served from the cache to the total number of contents request, requested. And the second metric is um, time to first byte. Here, this is the just small mistake, time to first byte, not bit. For the baseline, one of the most traditional approach is chosen one leaf node model and uh, the second one is arbitrary hierarchic model is used uh, to evaluate the pro proposed architecture, dynamic cluster formation. 10 experiments are conducted for each method and uh, hit ratio and time to first byte is recorded with 95% confidence interval at the end. This figure shows heat ratio measurement of three different topologies. Um, X-axis shows different alpha values in zip distribution and Y-axis shows cache heat ratio. Here, blue bar is the proposed approach. Orange bar in the middle is arbitrary two-level hierarchy model and green one is the one level leaf mod node model. As you can see here, the proposed popularity based two level hierarchical uh, topology outperforms other topologies in, in popular contents, contents with low alpha value. So this difference gets more significant when the value of alpha grows. And uh, this is because it deals with uh, unpopular contents. The proposed method actually um, shows approximately 9% improvement compared to arbitrary two level topology. It is probably due to patent sensitivity of the algorithm and the way it cluster H into the different groups. So the second analysis shows the time to first byte. Looking at the another evaluation, as you can see in the figure, we can see similar effect. As you can see here, the proposed algorithm has lead to um, 7 dot 39 percentage improvement in the time to first byte. It is good to know that this result may vary in similar tests since time to first byte value between client edge H origin shield and origin shield to the origin may vary due to the network situation and the distance of the servers to each other. Again, uh, what is obvious here is that the proposed method has taken away arbitrary two-level hierarchy in reducing uh, time to first byte for the contents. Uh, as a conclusion, um, um, is a novel approach, uh, a hierarchical caching topology formation algorithm is proposed for CDNs. The main focus is user-generated contents, which begin uh, being highly important in today's internet traffic and leads long tail and low performance. It is also clear that the proposed uh, seam can significantly improve cache hit ratio for a higher shape parameter alpha in zip distribution, which is equivalent to two uh, long tail contents. So um, I would like to thank you to all for you for uh, for your precious time. And I also want to say special thanks to others for this uh, research effort and contribution to CDN research. Others uh, would be appreciated if you have any question. So we will continue the session with a presentation from research group of uh, Dr. Huang Minh Thien and Chen Viet Hùng from Lequidon Technical University. The presentation has titled a real time internal collaboration method for radar system using digital face and array antennas. Please.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to give a uh, talk entitled a Real-Time Internal Calibration Method for Radar Systems Using Digital Phase Array Antennas. Here is the outline of the presentation today. Uh, we uh, move to the introduction. Uh, as you know, the um, uh, phase array antenna system uh, is uh, used widely uh, in many applications, uh, including radar application. So uh, uh, calibration is very important for the phase array uh, system in general and phase array radar. System <coughs> specific. So, um, uh, jam, yeah, to um, in um, transmitter and uh, uh, receiver channel uh, needs to calibration. But uh, in this presentation, I uh, we uh, describe an internal calibration method for uh, only receiving channels. Uh, as you know, calibration for antenna system is very important because uh, uh, it's uh, when the number of uh, element of array is uh, increased, uh, the um, uh, calibration will uh, determine the performance of uh, uh, this uh, beforming and uh, uh, determine the accuracy of the directional uh, task of the system. So, uh, in okay, so in um, many uh, many system, uh, the real time internal calibration is compulsory. Uh, internal calibration method is mean in which uh, calibration signal is generated and coupled to the, uh, the receiver receiving channel and uh, uh, processing unit inside the system are different from the external calibration. Uh, the calibration signal is transmitted from outside. And uh, the real-time internal calibration is uh, necessary because uh, in some system, uh, we cannot interrupt the operation of the system. So the calibration process is carried out uh, during the data acquisition and during the operation of the system. So previous um, real-time calibration method use frequency of the cali calibration uh, different from the frequency of the echo signals. So here we can see that um, uh, the characteristic of um, uh, receiving channel uh, we can see that it's not flat in uh, a tie of the, the bandwidth. So here is a desired signal, and in the uh, radar application, this is uh, echo signal. And calibration signal here, uh, the frequency of calibration signal is in band, but uh, different from the desired signal. So uh, because the um, characteristic of the receiver channel is not flat, so uh, Parameter we measure uh, through calibration signal is not uh, uh, reflected accurately uh, the um, parameter of the receiving channel. So a little calibration errors. So, so in, in this uh, research, we propose a calibration signal, new calibration signal. Uh, the calibration signal is, here is uh, BPSK combined to with OK modulation signal. 
uh, lies uh, this uh, figure show uh, the illustrate the uh, Calibre Sensino and uh, with uh, our pay sequence and uh, uh, BB, BBSK code here. Yeah. So the calibration signal and code signal have the same frequency and bandwidth. So the uh, calibration signal will reflect uh, channel parameters more accurately. And, uh, but uh, uh, there are some disadvantage. Uh, so calibration signal and echo signal exist uh, together in the entire of the, of the receivers. So uh, they impact each other. So how we uh, solve this problem? First, uh, we need to reduce impact of the calibration signal on the quality of the receiving channels. Uh, we resolve this problem by uh, uh, using the um, uh, calibration signal with very small duty circle. So uh, the average power of the calibration signal is much lower than the noise power. And uh, in this case, the uh, calibration signal can treat as uh, can treat can be treated as a uh, noise for the receiving channel. But uh, uh, with the uh, very, very small duty circle, the uh, power, average power of the calibration signal is very small. And uh, the second problem is um, uh, the, the echo signal will impact on the calibration performance uh, because uh, they exist together in the receiving channel. So if, uh, if echo signal is larger, the impact is uh, higher. So we, uh, uh, we resolve this problem by using uh, a threshold. If the echo signal is uh, much higher than the noise level, uh, the cal calibration is not simple and start to uh, process. Uh, this figure uh, illustrates um, the situation. When the echo signal is large, uh, the calibration signal is not simple and store for uh, process processing. Uh, the structure of the um, transceiver module for the proposed method is uh, depicted in this figure. Uh, in this uh, structure, the blue light is uh, calibration signal, and the pink light is a combination signal, including uh, calibration signal and uh, uh, echo signal from the antenna to the system. And this is the process of the proposed calibration method. After some uh, primary processing stages here, uh, the signal, combination signal is uh, uh, compared to the uh, threshold and uh, sample with the large power of echo signal is rejected. So, uh, um, the signal is uh, uh, stored and uh, together with the uh, CN sequence. And uh, after that, collaboration processing is uh, implemented to separate the uh, calibration signal and echo signal. Yeah. After that, um, uh, we estimate the parameter of the uh, channel here yeah, and uh, calibration signal, uh, calibration unit, we use uh, measurement, uh, parameter measurement here to compensate the parameter of the receiving channel, yeah, including uh, phase and amplitude uh, parameter. Uh, here we um, estimate the calibration errors by uh, mathematical analysis. Uh, through some mathematical transformations, uh, we uh, derive the amplitude error equation like this. And this figure, uh, uh, this is a graph, shows the um, amplitude error in dB 
with uh, a number of samples and uh, and uh, with different of uh, power level of uh, noise and echo signal. This number is uh, ratio of uh, power level of noise and echo signal to uh, peak power of uh, calibration signal. And we can see that uh, when uh, uh, power of noise and echo signal are uh, equivalent to peak power of calibration signal with uh, uh, number of sample about uh, 10,000, uh, we can get the uh, amplitude error below uh, 0 0.1 dB. It's good. Uh, similarly, phase errors is uh, derived so in this equation. And uh, when the number of uh, sample is uh, 10,000, we can see that uh, the phase error can reach the value below uh, 0 0.8 degree. Of course, uh, when noise and echo signal increase, uh, the error is also increased. So, um, to uh, to uh, estimate the impact of the um, calibration signal on the quality of the receiving channel, um, we we know that in radar technique, uh, signal is usually can um, accumulated over many uh, repetition periods. So, if we uh, apply a calibration signal with very small DT circle here is uh, the uh, average power of the calibration signal is uh, very small by M time in comparison to uh, the peak power. So compared to the noise level, the average power of calibration signal is very small. So uh, this, uh, this graph shows the um, probability density function of the interference with and without the calibration signal. Uh, we can see that the maximum is uh, internal noise uh, without the calibration signal. And with, when we apply uh, the calibration signal with the inverse of beauty circle equal to 32, uh, the probability density function is uh, not uh, different with uh, internal noise so far, yeah. And we uh, evaluate the uh, uh, maximum detection range uh, reduction with the uh, increase of uh, inverse of duty circle. You can see that uh, when M a uh, bit uh, larger than uh, 24, the ratio of uh, uh, detection range, maximum detection range when uh, with the calibration signal over the detection range uh, without calibration signal because then 99%. Uh, this means that the maximum detection range reduced um, smaller than 1%. Uh, after mathematical analysis, we evaluate uh, the system by uh, the proposed method by uh, simulation. And uh, the simulation use four channels. And, and we can see that in the top uh, graph, it's uh, four, four signals of four channels here before calibration. And the bottom graph is uh, signals after calibration. Uh, we can see that uh, they almost the same phase and amplitude. And uh, here is a uh, phase error and amplitude error uh, after calibration. Uh, we can see that the phase error and uh, amplitude error can reach uh, the value smaller than 0 0.1 dB and 0 0.8 uh, 
uh, degree, respectively. In comparison to the other research, uh, they get um, results of uh, 0 0.5 dB and 0 0.9 degree uh, in amplitude and phase error, respectively. So it, uh, we can see that the proposed method is uh, uh, effective and can get um, uh, accuracy, good accuracy. And here is, um, is so the signal to noise ratio reduction when we apply the uh, calibration signal to the system. And we can see that the calibration cost is 0 0.16 dB reduction of uh, signal to noise ratio. In reality, uh, this number is no meaning, almost no meaning. So uh, we can neglect the impact of the calibration signal on the system. So we move to the conclusion. Um, the, calib the calibration signal has the same frequency and bandwidth uh, with the echo signal of the rad radio. So uh, um, measure parameters uh, reflect more accurately the channel characteristics. So uh, it improves the accuracy of the um, calibration process. And the calibration errors can reach uh, 0 0.8 degree and 0 0.1 dB in phase and amplitude error, um, respectively. So uh, that's all for the presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Tian, for an uh, interesting presentation. So now the time has a Q&A. So is anybody has question? So I have a small question. Uh, so what is the principle of the BPSK and OK combination? Principle, uh, yes. Uh, the OK sequence uh, is a random, uh, random sequence. Yeah. The um, uh, left uh, value R one is appear randomly, and uh, inside the inside the one value of OK sequence, we put the BPSK code inside, and the uh, uh, the parameter of uh, modulation is chosen so that the bandwidth of the calibration signal almost same uh, bandwidth of echo signal. It's randomly and PPSK goes also randomly. Okay, I see. Thank you. So thank you, Robert. So now we move to the, the last work, uh, micro motion target classification based on FMCW radar using standard residual neural network uh, from Dr. Duan Van Sang from Naval Academy, uh, Lê Hải, Lê Đại Phong, Hoàng Văn Phúc from Lequidon Technical University and from Kumon National Institute of Technology. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, I uh, would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for the uh, introduction. And uh, on behalf of the old author, uh, today I would like to in, uh, introduce about our work on the title of uh, micro, uh, micro motion package uh, 
uh, classification based on FMCW radar using extended residual audio network. This is outline of my presentation. Now we go to introduction. As we know, uh, the autonomous vehicle is uh, a future technology. And uh, if a vehicle or a car uh, runs uh, uh, complexly uh, autonomous on the road, uh, the car must be uh, equipped some uh, sensor to uh, to uh, detect the surround uh, object. For example, the car can uh, apply the uh, radar sensor for adaptive uh, cruising control or uh, leader sensor for uh, emergency braking or uh, object detection. And also uh, nowadays a camera is the, uh, equipped uh, in the many, uh, many car, but um, the uh, camera the, uh, gives up the hill uh, information. And the short and medium uh, range data can be used at the FMCW uh, technique and ultra uh, ultra sound uh, sensor can be used for fast uh, acid. Uh, now we, we can compare uh, the uh, different uh, sensor as you see on the slide. Uh, the first one is camera, second one data, and the last one is data. So the camera can the uh, record the high resolution image at the far range and uh, can record the color uh, video or image. But the camera cannot work in the darkness and uh, uh, direct sun or harsh weather. Uh, another, uh, another, uh, an, uh, other sensor is LIDAR. LIDAR can uh, uh, recontact the 3D uh, three-dimensional image, but data cannot uh, work uh, under the direction and harsh weather. And another uh, sensor, we know that the radar can work in uh, any condition. So in our work, we uh, focus only on the uh, FMCW uh, radar. Uh, is uh, equipped in uh, autonomous uh, car. Uh, related work. Uh, we have a survey, uh, some uh, related work on the, our uh, research. Uh, as the reference uh, 20, uh, Samaras has uh, proposed a deep learning for classified different types of drone through the uh, data set handled from the surveillance data. And he gets accuracy up to uh, 19, uh, 95%. And in the literature 21, uh, uh, Xiaolin Ma uh, has classified the uh, four human motion by adopting uh, you know, machine learning, namely uh, back cheese. And uh, this model uh, often accuracy up to nine, uh, 97.3%. And uh, in another work, uh, uh, Garcia have uh, proposed CNN to detect uh, vacant parking space with uh, using uh, with using the uh, image the radar at frequency seven seventy seven gigahertz, and he also gets accuracy up to ninety seven point two percent. And um, the last one in the literature, uh, literature uh, twenty three one dimensional parallel structure. The, com uh, the combination of uh, the uh, CNN and uh, 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 lots, uh, a long short-term memory structure uh, is proposed for, identify, uh, for identifying uh, a space target micro portion. And accuracy is also very high. Um, um, uh, FMCW, uh, FMCW radar uh, can uh, receive the echo uh, with uh, the um, frequency analyst. And as we know that uh, Doppler effect is a phenomena when the, trans, uh, the transmitter uh, moving. And if 
uh, transmitter a moving far away uh, from the receiver. So receive, receive, uh, receive the signal uh, with a lower frequency. And uh, if the transmitter move toward to the receiver, and uh, the receiver received a higher frequency. And uh, in the slides, you can see the equation to calculate the uh, Doppler frequency shift. And uh, if uh, object move uh, toward and backward, so the frequency is not the shift uh, uh, translation, but uh, uh, micro uh, that Doppler, uh, Doppler frequency will be trained uh, as the uh, periodically and all uh, har harmonic. Uh, we can see on the slide that the some object moving uh, will conduct the micro Doppler uh, signal, for example, uh, by uh, snow falling or rain, or uh, micro Doppler signal will be conducted by grass or tree, and human, human walking will be uh, Will be uh, uh, generate the the micro Doppler also, and the fan and well, and uh, on the slide is the two example. Of point. The first one is a uh, uh, pedestrian. Uh, when the human walk, uh, the uh, his the hand and his the leg we are moving moving backward and forward. So uh, the frequency, uh, uh, Doppler frequency will be trained uh, follow the moving of uh, object. And the second one is bicycle. Bicycle, um, you can see uh, the, the bicycle will uh, moving backward and forward also. And also the panda, the panda uh, moving. And you can see the, uh, the um, reflected signal received by uh, FMCW uh, frequency uh, by FMCW radar uh, when we generate, um, uh, we when we analyze by uh, time frequency spectrum, the spectrum is different, and uh, from this the signature we can uh, classify which uh, which the target is. Uh, based on the uh, theory, uh, we uh, design a model in the um, program MATLAB. And uh, on the slide, you can see on the table the key parameter of uh, our model to generate the data set. As a result, there are total uh, 20,000 uh, spectrogram image. And uh, from the total uh, image, we divide into uh, eight. 50% for training CNN and 20% uh, for uh, testing the model. And this is the representative uh, image uh, we generate. The first uh, uh, target, we uh, assume that uh, one uh, person walk. The second one is one uh, bicyc uh, bicyclist. And the uh, third one is a two person. Uh, the next one is uh, one person and one bicyclist. And the last one is the spectrogram of the two bicyclists. This is the hour uh, on the slide. As you can see, we propose, we design a neural network. Our network can divide into, uh, can divide into uh, three blocks, the input block, the residual block, and the output block. Because the uh, 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 spectrogram image have a size of uh, 400 by 400 by one, 144. So we design the input. We design the input size. This is the same the size of uh, spectrogram. And the output we have uh, four, uh, five targets. The output we design at the four, uh, five class. And number of filter we decided key, uh, the big key uh, equal to 60, 64 uh, filters. And the, uh, the filter side, uh, we design as key by uh, small key by key. So uh, 
in this time uh, we uh, the, uh, we assign as the key equal to three and mark pulling side uh, is three by three and side of uh, two by two and activation function in the uh, our model we use uh, uh, rectify rec rectify in a unit and on the um, on the slide on the picture the B you can see we design the residual block. Residual block has uh, three blanks. The first blank we use standard uh, convolution. The second one is the group convolution. And last one is a snake, a skip connection. This is uh, detailed. Um, now uh, I explain why we use a group convolution. Yeah, uh, you can see on the slide this difference between the standard convolution and group convolution. In the standard convolution, uh, we make the combination of uh, multi multiplication and addition uh, of the input feature with the filter. Uh, it is uh, like a fully connected. But in the group uh, convolution, we divide uh, uh, input feature and uh, filter in uh, in the number of uh, group, so the connection is reduced. It means that the uh, the the uh, learnable parameter will be reduced and uh, will be reduced the computational cost. And the last line is the skip connection. Skip connection have to uh, combine with former uh, feature with the uh, actual uh, feature. Uh, because uh, when uh, we apply the convolution uh, layer, the feature will be lost and uh, we use the, the, the skip connection to, uh, to improve the accuracy of a neural network. And uh, we have uh, uh, make some uh, experiment on the, uh, uh, on some, uh, we, we have uh, uh, analyzed the CNN, uh, our neural network by some experiment. And we have changed our network on the computer hardware with the configuration on the slide you can see. And uh, the proposed model uh, is trained in the 20 uh, epoch uh, with the mini best size of uh, 32, uh, initial learning rate of uh, 0.01 with a drop factor of 0 0.1 uh, after every four epoch. Uh, the first uh, experiment we uh, analyze the uh, the neural network uh, with the different uh, resi residual net uh, residual block uh, from one to six. Uh, here we con uh, we uh, we assign the number of filter is sixty four and filter size three by three. And as you can see the result on the on the slide. The classification accuracy of network is improved along with the increment of the number of residual blocks. It means that uh, the, the network is go deeper. So the accuracy is the, uh, significantly improved with a small number of residual blocks. For example, two blocks uh, is better than uh, one block around 7%. Uh, why a tiny gap? You can see uh, the tiny gap is uh, deducted if the increasing from the five to six block. And in the second uh, experiment, we uh, we, can, uh, we generate a data set with uh, noise and a data set without noise. We uh, try to uh, training the uh, CNN our model with the data set with noise and with uh, training with data set without noise. So as a result, so that uh, the, the network training with noise performs classification better than 
uh, network uh, training with sound noise. Uh, from that uh, experiment, uh, we can success that the network model should be trained with the data set of diversity to improve the accuracy and uh, prevent the overfitting problem. The last, uh, experiment, uh, the last experiment, we uh, try to uh, compare our network with to another uh, model. Uh, as so on the slide, you can see uh, the uh, in the restorator, uh, the net uh, zero one and in restorator twenty six, and net zero two in the uh, restorator twenty uh, twenty seven. This is a three model. You can see the difference. And we compare the parameter of three different and the accuracy. Uh, the result is shown in the table. You can see that our model have a less uh, learnable parameter. It means that uh, our uh, model uh, have a lower computational cost, but the accuracy of our model is higher than to to uh, to other uh, model you can see on this is the result of our experiment so uh, we have a proposal in our work we have a proposal uh, and design a novel network uh, architecture that is impaired by residual uh, convolution neural network the network uh, is confused with the skip connection for improve the accuracy and we use a group a convolution to reduce the learnable parameter that reduce the computational complexity. And the, our uh, network achieved the best set of performance with the high residual convolution uh, configuration. And when we compare with to another uh, another uh, network, our our proposed network had a significant outperform to other one. Uh, in the future work, we uh, want to uh, design the model for the more type of micro layer data targets and uh, simultaneously uh, improve the network performance in terms of classification accuracy and, and computational cost. And uh, in other uh, in another uh, sense, we uh, want to we we want to uh, desire some um, technique for pre-processing uh, that can be uh, enhanced uh, target classification accuracy. So thank you for so attention. Any question, please. Great, thank you, Doctor Tamasang. So now move to question is there any question please So thank you for the uh, question. It's uh, very interesting. 
Uh, the first one, I want to talk uh, more detail about the, uh, the data set. So the data set I generate by the, the program MATLAB. And I set up the platform as the uh, parameter you can see on the slide. And I explain more about the data set here. Uh, for the human, I make the different point by the human model and the different point moving. And then I generate, I make the uh, uh, radar cross section, then transmit, I, I, make, I design the model to transmit signal from the uh, FNCW radar to the object and then receive. Uh, this is a data set and uh, I generate a different data set with a different uh, situation. Then uh, I generate the, uh, the spectrogram uh, image. So now I have a variable uh, data set if you want to get it so I can say it is free. And I also say the cost also. Uh, it's the uh, most important. <laughs> it is the, the first, first one, first person, uh, for the second. You can see it's a uh, difference between the, our uh, architecture and another one. You can see uh, uh, two uh, network, Net01 and Net02 have uh, only backbone uh, architecture from input to, from input to output. They use uh, con convolutional layer, uh, mark pooling layer, activation layer only, and then uh, a fully connected layer. We use, we not use like this, we use the uh, convolution layer, standard convolution layer. We use a group a convolution layer. Group convolution layer have to review, to review the parameter the weight parameter, and we use the skip connection. Uh, you can see here, uh, yes. We use the skip connection. Skip connection have to take the former picture from the, from the uh, normalization layer to skip to the addition. It's combined with the two first uh, branch. The first branch is, uh, we use the standard convolution and the second branch we use group uh, convolution. So uh, with the uh, diversity of the uh, feature, the uh, accuracy, uh, the accuracy performance of the network can be enhanced. So thank you very much. Yes, please. Please. Uh, yes. Yes, so, so, so you can. Um, yes, actually, so on the data set, I, uh, I'm not clear now, but the, I can show to you the number of picture uh, number of feature input here i have a uh, one image uh, with a size of uh, 400 by one uh, 144 so is the so very large yeah bigger input is slower computational time yes Uh, 
Okay, thank you. So due to the conference and schedule, so if anybody has questions, so please uh, uh, ask Dr. Sang later. And okay. uh, if anyone ask him the data set, uh, don't hesitate to contact him. Yes. And also architect of network, I can say also. Yeah, thank you. So this is the last uh, presentation of the session. So uh, uh, we will close this session now and move to another activities. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chung, for being the technical program chair of uh, our last session. And now we are moving on to a next very important part of the conference. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start uh, a best paper award session. And after carefully select, after a careful selection process, the technical program committee has uh, selected the high quality paper for award. Uh, including the best paper award and the best student paper award. And the result is as follows. Best paper award is CLAN, a robust controlling for area mesh network in contested environment. Uh, alpha, alpha is uh, Kilik Pirat Roskan, Odogan Met Met Ozgen. The city got hand can work from Istanbul Technical University. Uh, congratulations to Kulik and his research group. Uh, since Alpha is not available on site, so we will send the award to them later. And uh, next, I would like to announce the best student paper award. The smart shoe basis battery free Bluetooth now low energy sensor. Uh, up for Nguyen Thanh Hùng, Lê Quang Huy, Vu Thi Anh, and Lê Minh Thuy from Hanoi University of Science and Technology. Congratulations. Uh, now I would like to invite Professor Van Phuc Huang, General Chair, to give the award to the author. And I would like to invite the author to the seat. Please. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much for attending the Initcom 2021 conference. So after two days of the conference, we have we have received many uh, nice presentation. We have uh, about we have thirty nine presentation with online and and uh, on site presentation. So I hope that you you all has many interesting discussion and some many plans for the future collaboration. So we hope that uh, you have enjoyed the conference so, and come, you, can, you will come back to contribute to the, the next Initcom 2022 conference. So thank you very much.